Hello, good day, and welcome back to Go on the Run. And today we're going to continue with Kubernetes service, and this is part two. In the last video, I sort of illustrate what the problem was when you use a deployment and you're able to create and delete pods, and you will need to send traffic or receive traffic from those pods. What happens? Are you going to determine which pod to use? And ideally, if you're going to scale up your deployment have multiple pods running it's because you want to be able to load balance right or at least increase the ability for them to do more processing or generate more data or whatever it is but you want you don't want to use one at a time and what we saw is if we did a port forward we could only hit one pod alone and we don't want that what we want to be able to do is to be able to connect to all the pods in at least a fashion that abstract away where pods are running and so on So before we jump into actually seeing some code or whatever, let's now um, look through some diagrams to see, get a better idea of what's going on. So I'll take you back a little bit. I had some Linux server and I want to provide high availability. High availability is essentially, I have a node running some kind of service and I want to make sure that if anything happens to this node, I can still be able to provide service. So what I did was I created two identical nodes, right? So I had another server running the same software. And now because they're two separate nodes, they of course have to have different IP addresses. So that's what you see in here with the IP addresses, right? A, X, Y, one and two. Well, I'm doing high availability, which I'm not trying to increase throughput. I'm not trying to solve more clients. I just want to make sure that there's at least one service always, the service is always available. That's why high availability. So let's say that all these services had some shared storage. They don't have to, but let's just say they do. And so what I can do then is I can, on my network, where the services are going to be reachable, I can then assign the services the same IP address. Now notice that the one individual IP is one and two, but then they have this shared IP address here, IP address three. You might hear this called a service IP address. I might here call a shared IP address or a floating IP address. And you'll see why sort of floating IP address sort of makes a little bit of sense, but the service address also is because that's where the service is available, but regardless of which node is running. So all those make sense. And of course shared because it's gonna be shared between them. Now, while these services are up, I cannot actually assign the same IP address to both of them because Networking wise, what's going to happen is the Linux kernel or any operating system really would say, hey, um, you're trying to give me an IP address that's shared by another machine. Or if a second machine come up afterward with the IP address, well, you're going to be notified like, hey, there's another machine or a host with the same IP address, right? So you can't actually have them running at the same time with the same IP address. So what you do is you run a piece of software that essentially while the service is up and everything, what it does though is it does not assign this IP address. It knows to assign it, but it doesn't. And what this piece of code is doing, I don't show it, it's keep pinging to see, hey, is this IP address, um, is the host of this IP address responding? So it keep pinging the service IP address, right? And so that piece of code is running here on node two. And so it keep pinging this IP address. And if it's getting a response, it knows that node one is up and available. And so it doesn't need to do anything. And so node one is up and it's active, right? This is called active standby because node two is standby. It's waiting in case anything happened to node one. And so let's just say that node one suffered a failure, either the host or the service itself. Either way, now that node one is having an issue, what we'll do is deactivate you know, node one, either by making sure we um, either turn it off if the service is what was bad, but the nose is still um, up, so that uh, it no longer tries to control the service I address or that floating address. And now what we can do is on node two, we can now activate the services that we need, right? Um, if it was the services already of the API service, then, you know, we don't have to start it. We just assign IP address three to this host, right? The script that is monitoring would detect this and do this. And so clients who are now trying to connect, notice the clients who are coming in and connect here on the switch, for example, they would get routed to this other to this other node because this is the node that's now 
um, A Y A X Y three. The clients always use the service or the floating IP address. They never use IP address two or one because they don't need to talk to individual um, nodes. We still need the individual IP address because we need to manage those nodes. But for the service point of view of providing a service, the clients only need to know about this IP address. And now you can see why I just got the service IP address. We could also see the IP address sort of move or floats between the two hosts. So that's why we can also call it like a floating IP. So now let's talk about load balancing. We just saw high availability. So load balancing is very different. So with load balancing, we have multiple nodes and again, multiple services up, and we want all of them to be available. And so with this, what we want is that when clients try to connect, maybe they get connect, some connections go to node one, some connection goes to node two, and some connection goes to node three. So you can imagine that if you're trying to serve, let's say um, nine clients, three connections on average will land on one, three connections will land on two, three connections will land on three. And that's sort of evenly distributed the load, okay? So no one server is serving all or the majority of the load. Now it might be a little bit off, like maybe node one might get two and node two might get four, something like that. But generally we try to keep it that way. And so there are different load balancing strategies to help to distribute the load. And that's why it's called load balancing. It balances out the load. Um, you might do a wrong ribbon where the first connection goes to node one, the second goes to two, the third goes to three, the fourth goes to one, and that's wrong ribbon because you're kind of going wrong. Or you can do like last, least, recent, least recently used or um, one with the least load because maybe even though node one might be having only one connection, um, it might that connection might be consuming a lot of resources. And so node two might have two connections, but it's not really that busy. And so you might send it there. So there are different strategies. Regardless, this is what we have. We have multiple nodes and we want all of them to be available. And so we put a load balancer in front of them. The load balancer knows about all the nodes that it needs to balance the load too. It must, because what's gonna happen, just like when we had um, I availability case with the service IP address, the clients only need to know about the service IP address. And similarly here, we give our load balancer an IP address. The load balancer is a piece of software. As I said, we're gonna run its own physical node or something, it doesn't matter, but it's gonna have its own IP address. And so client would connect to the load balancer and then the load balancer, because it knows about all the services and the nodes where they're running, it can now distribute the load account to whatever load balancing strategy you decide to use. Right. So this is how we get to have more service running and be able to use them. And again, if in the case that you suffer an issue on node one, the load balancer is updated and it knows that only two nodes are available, node two and three. And so when clients connect, it wouldn't send them to node one because node one is down. And so if you just simply send them to node two and three, but you're still balancing out the load. Now, let's go to Kubernetes. So in Kubernetes, I have this cluster and it has three nodes with a number of pods running. And so you can see, um, I have this pod and this pod here that have the same color. So that would be because they were created by a replica, um, by a deployment. And so they're a replica of each other. And so we know that though each pod must have its own IP address. So let's call them P1, P2, da, 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 right? And we talked about the networking and Kubernetes already. And we know that though each pod can reach any other pod regardless on which node it is. So pod one here, can reach pod six by simply using its IP address and Kubernetes take care of all the routing between the nodes for us. So we don't need to show any lines for that. We know that already. The problem becomes that for these two pods, pod one and pod three, how does a client talk to determine which pod to talk to? So let's say pod two here needs to talk to pod five and six or pod two needs to talk to pod three and one. Well, it needs to get their IP address and which one should it get? And what if um, something happened with part three and it moved over here to node three? It, it needs to keep track of all that. So this is going to be a nightmare, not to mention since they're multiple, which one does it connect to? Remember, it just needs to really talk to one of them. So it seems like we need something like a load balance, okay? This is essentially the same problem we have, except in Kubernetes, this is what we call a service. And so we can create a service and let's say service A, which would connect to those replicas, you know, part one and part three. And now part two, if it needs to talk to 
those guys, it just talk through service A. So it's going to say, I want to talk to service A. And service A acts like a load balancer and decides, oh, I'm going to make a connection to part one. And then maybe there's another request that comes in from part two, and it goes, oh, I'll send you to part three instead. But notice part two doesn't really care, and it doesn't know how many pods are behind this service. And it shouldn't. That's exactly like what the load balancer was doing for us. And we could create another service, like the service B, and it can, you know, do the load balancing for or provide a service for um, pod, pod five and six. Now, I don't show it here, but the services, they have an IP address too. We'll see that on the command line, that the service have an IP address. So part one could use the IP address for the service to, you know, as a way to talk to it. But I don't show that here because in reality, what you're going to want to do is forget using an IP address for anything and use the name. So why not use the service name and you'll get the same results of being able to get routed to a pod within that service, a pod within that service. And that's all you care about is getting to a pod. You just don't care which one and where it's running. And so the full picture then is that once you have services connected, you know, within the Kubernetes networking layer, the router or whatever is connecting all these things and knowing at the stuff at the high level, remember across nodes, any connection that you want to make to a pod, if you go through a service or you go through this routing area, you can tell you, oh, if pod two wants to talk to pod to the service B, for example, it would simply say, oh, I want to talk to the service B, and it hit the router, and the router routes it over to service B, because that's what it wants. It says it wants to talk to service B, and service B is responsible then to route it to whichever pod is available for that service. And you don't have to think about the detail. I don't want to draw too many lines because this is going to get crazy. So that's the picture you want to keep in mind. And now let's jump to the command line and see how some of this works. In the last video, I showed you that if we scaled up our deployment, and we tried to connect to our different pods that we really didn't get the benefit of having multiple running because if we wanted to connect to one, we had to choose a specific pod to connect to. We didn't have anything that gave us a single point of connection and that would like load balance or hide the fact that we had multiple serve pods running. And so what we needed something called a service. So I sort of show you the problem there. And now today we're gonna to write our first service and show how a service solves this problem. I'm going to pick up um, here with a new directory, and currently it's empty. But the only thing I want to bring forward from what we were doing yesterday is I want to, from part one, I want to bring over our YAML file, okay? And so I want to copy that here in our current directory. So you should see if I copy that, that's the only thing I, I want to start with. I don't want to use the go or anything because we already have images and everything for that. So there's no need to bring all that over. So currently where we left off, we had like one replica and that's fine. And so I showed the problem that if we had multiple, like three, and I could show it how um, we can adjust to Q, CTL, apply, and minus F, and then this file in this current directory, and we should have three pods going. And I showed the problem that when I tried to connect to, when I put forward, I had to pick one of them. Instead of picking a specific pod, one of the things I can do is say I want to put forward this um, deployment. So let me control C this guy, and then I'm gonna say I have a deployment, and I have, let's say, a service. Now we haven't created the service yet, but we'll have it waiting on service SVC. All right, so I'm going to close this window here, and I'll do it like this. Actually, let's do it this way. OK. Do it this way. OK. So now I'm looking at my deployment and services. So I can say kubectl port forward, and I can say I want to put forward the deployment. So like this. And so there are two ways you can specify things in Kubernetes. You can say deployment, space, and the name, or you can use it like this. And so the port I'd like to put forward, um, my pods are listening to port 8080. So on my local machine, I maybe I want it to be 8082, and then I can say um, it's 8080 in the um, pods. 
So what is supposed to happen now? My deployment has three parts. So when I enter, you'll see, yep, port forward, and it opened the port for me. Now I can do curl, you know, curl local host 8082. And I should get to a part. And notice I'm getting to LP, which is that first one. What happens when I keep entering connection, um, making connection like this? Notice it still is not doing any load balancing. I'm still going to that one part. What I want to show you is that even if we don't explicitly pick a part, if we say just connect to port forward at deployment, Kubernetes just simply pick one of the picks one of the part in that deployment. So we still have the same problem. Okay. So what about our service? So let's now um, go create a service. So I'm going to start with a new file. I'm going to call it, let's say, app server <laughs> on my, my backend service. So service. Okay. App server API service. Let's call it something like that, that Yama. And then I want to create a service. And so this is Kubernetes service. So if I add that, um, enter, you'll see that this is what I get. Just as before, we have an API version, kind, metadata, which is just the name, and then selector. So we've been using for our deployment, so remember here in the specification for the um, pods, they have the label section. This is the label we're attaching to that part is this. So this is what we want to give to our selector here. Just like our um, deployment have a selector to select pods. So this is the app, the label for our thing. It could be multiple labels as we talked about before. Now, in terms of name for our service itself, we can give it any name. We can say um, my backend server, API server, service, whatever you like, right? And the port. So uh, maybe I call this a serve backend API or something. And then the port here, the target port. This makes sense. Which port am I targeting on those containers? And we said they're running on eight port eighty eighty. Which port should my service itself be listening on? Remember, the service is going to have its own IP address. And so it needs a port. We can give it the same port if we like. So 8080 keeps things simple. We're not using that port in our cluster right now. So remember, service is going to be something that's cluster wide. So anywhere within the cluster, you're going to be able to use this service. So it has to be unique within the cluster itself. So there we go, port 8080. And it maps back to 8080 on the, um, on the, pod, um, the, the pods. Well, I'm not going to worry with this connection right now. So I'm control C and get out of that. And instead, what I'm going to do is say QCTL apply minus F and then the service, right? API service. And I add that. And now you'll see a service is created and it's given a cluster ID, like I said, and it has a port, port 80. So that's where you can reach that, that um, service. So does this work now? What if we were to do kubectl, let me clean up this window, kubectl port forward, and I say I wanted to port forward the service instead, paste this here, and I say I want to do port 8082 on my machine, and then it's port 80 for that service. What if I did that? Okay, it's port forwarded, it says, um, 8082 goes to 8080 because remember that's where my service is. Well, does this work? So if I do cleanup and I do this, notice it's still accessing the first one and it is not doing any load balancing. So did I lie to you by telling you a service um, can load balance and all this other stuff? No, I didn't lie. What happened is when we do a port forward, we are only picking one of the pods to port forward, okay? So if we look at the, the documentation for the port forward command, so I'm gonna stop this. Um, if we do this and then clean up and then we do kubectl, I do port forward minus h, and we scroll back here, you'll see forward one or more local ports to a pod. 
well you can still do multiple quotes per pod but still you have to pick it's going to pick a specific pod and so it does not it does not like for example forward these ports to let's say you had several pods in um, several containers in a pod with um, you know several ports open on a pod you can do multiple ports right because maybe we have we have a configuration where we have a deployment with our you know um, redis and our server each listed on a port so th that's multiple ports and if we want to connect to all those then you could do multiple ports but you still only talk in top pod and so even when you do a service like this listen on port 8 da -da -da, three, um, 43 locally forward to the target port of the services port named that that in the pod selected by the service so the service is going to select a pod okay so port forwarding is not the way now mind you even with a deployment um we saw that all, it's like one pod but we still need like i say a service to do what we're talking about which hides the detail of how many pods it's just when you put forward it doesn't change anything and let me prove that to you so you know that we can do um if we look at our pods here let's select this pod for example and i'm gonna go back here zoom in and i can do kubectl describe you can say i want to describe and if i do this you can see it shows me you know when the pod was created all the labels attached to it all this other stuff we've seen this before the image that was used all this other good stuff what happened when we describe a service so let's do the same thing let's get our service name here and let's go back and do a kubectl describe and then let's describe our service and notice what we have we have endpoints and these endpoints there are three of them we have three pods running so the service is doing something different. It's targeting port 80 of each of these endpoints, and in itself is list, it's listening itself is listening on port 8080. That just happened to be how we did it. But notice it is picking up those endpoints, and I can prove it to you by doing this. I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna do Control C, and actually let's do it since we have it running here. I'll do a watch command, watch minus D. I'll do a watch command and with that you're going to be able to see that as I change the deployment the number of replicas you will see this automatically get updated so let's go to our deployment I'm going to make this one I'm going to come back here and I'm going to the Q CTL apply minus F deployment I remember I just scaled it down to one and notice what happened immediately the service picked up that there was only one pod running and so yep it only needs to know about one so these endpoints the things it could connect to or you could connect to via the service automatically get adjusted and if i change this to five and i come back here and i say apply notice that though since once they become healthy this is what happened it tell you that there are three and then plus two more so it automatically is picking up those endpoints for us so it is doing the mapping or identification or picking up which endpoint it needs to connect to. It's just that port mapping itself doesn't give us the ability to do it. No, what does? So let's do something else. So I'll do control D here to get rid of this. What I'll do is instead, I'll create another pod, but this time it's just gonna be a pod so that we could go into the cluster and from that pod in the cluster, we'll then try to use our service. So let's do that. So we'll do this cube ctl and we do the run command and remember we want to be able to give it a name so we can call this uh, let's see engine x and you can see pod created and so i want to be able to go into that pod so i can do kubectl so as i go there's like an exec command in docker to help you to go into that, con that container and you know basically run command from within the container we can do the same thing with a pod remember that a pod though operates like a whole local host so you don't really have to worry about the in the which specific container you enter and just go into the pod so minus it and i want to go into engine x oh i spelled that correct incorrectly test and the command i want to run is bash when i'm in that container so i do that or inside that pod and so now 
I'm on within this nginx text um, pod. And I know this because if I do IP ADDR list, oh, that command is not there, but I was going to show it out. I can show the IP address. But anyway, I'm within that pod. Now, notice our service name is this, and there's an IP address for our service. So if I were to do curl command, let's see if there's curl. So if I do curl and I do, um, let's try the name and see if that works, a server that be that API, and then I try port 8080. What, look for that. I get the messages back. And notice as I keep making requests, how it's load balancing and going to different pods which is exactly what we want. And I can, if I do this, if I say, while true, and then I can do curl command, do, um, do curl command, then I say sleep, and let's sleep like maybe um, half a second, or maybe one second, and then um, done, and I run this, you can see, that um look look at that you can see sometimes it goes to the same one for a few requests but then it's changing and it's going to a different one so that means our um service is working so while that is running i'll keep that running um maybe i'll just make it go a little bit faster so let's do half a second 25 and so it's going a little bit faster and so while that's going on this side i'll come back here and so let's do this now let's change how many pods we are running to show that oh hey it doesn't matter nothing is going to break like when we try to do port forward and so we do q ctl apply and apply change deployment we should see this change right so now we have three and look that's still going nothing is broken And actually, if I look at the pods themselves, so let's do watch and let's watch the pods. As you can see, we have WW, G8, and then M2. WW, M2, M2, G8. So those are our three pods. They get in traffic. And then if we scale down to one, then we should see all the messages are just going to WW. And that's exactly what's happening. So this is awesome. This is exactly what we want. And if we change and scale back up, nothing to do with our users. Notice the users of our application, let's do this then. The users of our application, once they go through the service, whether those are other pods or we're going to see how to make our service ex accessible externally. So we can use port forwarding. We have to use something else, but we'll get to that. And so if we look there now, look at this. Our new service when it says ready, or second part, sorry. So now you can see we're jumping between 2B and WW, which is what we have here. So hopefully this um, shows you why we needed a pod, um, a service to address the issue with having multiple pods where we don't have to think about which pod we're, we're hitting when pods go away and that sort of thing. Um, so thanks for your time. If you've waited this long and you watched the video to the end and you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. It does help um, in terms of getting the channel, you know, discovered by other people. So, and grow, which I certainly like to happen. And for those who are already a subscriber, thank you for coming back. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.